Tesla's range extender brings an optional battery pack that occupies a third of the 6 feet by 4 feet bed. When in place, the range extender extends the range of the Cybertruck dual motor all wheel drive from 340 miles to 470 plus miles, while the tri motor Cyber Beast sees its range extended from the estimated 320 miles to 440 plus miles. At the onset, it clearly seems to be driven by the concern with electric trucks that are reported to struggle with range doing heavy duty activities, typically towing and carrying large payloads. This method of bringing an additional battery pack also avoids the traditional range extension method of adding a gasoline generator to assist in charging batteries. It's surely difficult to imagine its easy addition or removal based on its sheer size. That's something everybody in the industry is waiting to know more about. In this video, we will examine this feature and try to place our assumptions as carefully and safely as possible. The idea is of course to get as close as possible to the feature, its technology advantages and limitations and set the right expectations. Range extenders are not new. The BMW i3 had the most common one that comes to mind. Even the Chevrolet Volt, I guess, had one. So Tesla's surprise package with the Cybertruck is not really a surprise. But it has surely raised eyebrows and questions. Two possibilities come to mind. One, the extender is an independent power storage, simply designed to hook when needed. It would accept only a portion of the total power flowing to the system when charging and sit there occupying a third of the bed to be available as needed. The second possibility is that it actually is designed to become a part of the high voltage system. That's going to be special where its voltage will be synced with the rest of the system, low when the pack is empty and rise as it charges. This is likely a 800 to 1000 pound weighing brick, assuming the power electronics it will have in it and its logistics itself will be challenging. With a forklift to move it around, where Tesla service stations will have to store the shipments and install on the incoming requests. This can't be simply bought, carried and used as a power bank. So that's already plenty to look forward to on how it will work. The main high voltage battery pack will be four 200 volt nominal units, I guess, wired in series. The extender, if wired as a single system, will have to always be in sync with the main battery pack, following the complete charging discharging cycle of the whole system. The most probable way would be an independent unit with a 50 kilowatt DC to DC connection with the main pack, probably an extra LFP battery exactly like the one in the existing Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive as the extender. The most optimistic assumption for me is that if that's only a port added for the extender to plug in as needed, which then can be used elsewhere as well. The extender when independent only needs a portion of the power going to the main pack, typically a fifth or sixth of the energy. It's also difficult to guess really. But all this speculation is simply a fiction of our imagination for now. Surely a factor many are watching and will be great to hear from all the power electronics specialists, the battery engineers on this in the comments. In the last video, we had checked the dummy document with the EPA of the Cybertruck's range estimates. And we had checked the back of the envelope calculations of its likely battery pack size. This was of course an unconfirmed number and lots could change by the time the formal range numbers are published by the EPA. That calculation indicated a likely battery pack size of 122.4 kWh, which was a simple multiplication as illustrated on its 816 volts of total pack voltage 
which is probably a mid charge value reported and its battery energy capacity of 150 amp hours giving us the 122.4 kilowatt hour number the efficiency of the vehicle and its charging performance will have a significant bearing on the demand for the range extender we also believe that eventually it will also depend on its use cases once people start driving on the roads the cybertruck has already raised concerns among safety experts particularly for non occupants the topic was heavily discussed on social media the stainless steel exterior that has even broken the stamping machine as said could be concerning to those likely to face an impact with it this design seems to have very limited crumple zones or parts that deform in a crash that also absorb the energy of an impact safely this could be counterbalanced by alternate shock absorbent mechanisms which will need to be seen generally however in a crash the car with the higher crumple zone loses against the one that's stiff it will also be interesting to see against the european safety standards which i believe are generally sterner us regulators rely on vehicle makers to self test and certify their adherence to safety standards these are among the many issues to follow with this very unique vehicle and we look forward to it on the additional range which is ultimately the idea behind the extender my views are well put out i have always believed that reliable charging which tesla possesses makes range really insignificant though i understand that with applications like towing and for some specific users these additional miles could be the deal makers or breakers but broadly it's not something i would care about particularly after i ascertain the expected good charging performance and infrastructure this is what the range extender is likely to be as per my understanding there will be plenty to it on software its thermal management its utility and handling and ultimately the actual range that it will add when in the real world plenty to look forward to see you in the next video